Hi, I'm Mike Malio, and I'm an origin hunter. In this mini webinar, I'm going to talk to you about adding Y-DNA records to your entire family tree. We all have a genealogy toolbox, and I'm going to talk to you about some tools that if you aren't using, you should, and that's DNA testing. Uh, the three big DNA tests are autosomal, mitochondrial, and Y-DNA. Today I'm going to be talking about using Y-DNA tests, uh, but more specifically, just finding Y-DNA records. So when you think about Y-DNA, most people think about dad, his father, his father's father, the paternal line. And that's true. Y-DNA can only test the paternal line because it's inherited uh, male to male to male. But don't limit yourself to just your immediate paternal line. You can also do mom's dad, mom's brother. That way you're going to get mom's surname. Or you can even look at grandma's brother or grandma's brother's son. I'm going to start with Ralph Ellenwood. He is my children's ninth great-grandfather. Uh, take a look at him. He was born 1607, died around 1674. So the first method I'm going to show you is using family tree DNA. Family Tree DNA, FamilyTreeDNA.com or FTDNA.com. Uh, the nice thing about Family Tree DNA is they have a great surname database, project database. Let me take, show you that. So in their project database, scroll down here, you can see that the projects are sorted, or the surnames are sorted alphabetically. Projects are sorted geographically. Um, you can also get... Uh, mitochondrial projects. So I'm going to put in Ellenwood. And my results come back as no Ellenwood, but Woodman. So I'm going to try a different spelling. Ellingwood with a G. I get the same results, Woodman. So let's take a look at the Woodman project. I'll click here on Woodman. And if we take a look at their group information, it's a description of the project, the requirements of the project, and the surnames in the project. So if we look through the surnames, we'll find Ellenwood, Ellingwood, Ellenwood, Elwood, Elmwood, Elwood, etc. Pretty much anything. So whoever created the, the Woodman project is looking for any relation to people with the name Wood in their, in their surname. Now, most Family Tree projects are hosted right here on the Family Tree website. In this case, uh, the project is hosted externally on a another site called worldfamilies.net. So I'm going to click through. Here is the Woodman DNA project out on worldfamilies.net. First thing I'm looking for are the Y results. quick scroll through the Y results to find my or any Ellingwoods, because we know they're in there. And right there, we have a Ralph Elwood, 1607-1673. Dates look pretty good. Not a lot of information right there to confirm that that's my Ralph Ellingwood. But the nice thing about the World Family site is that many times within a project, there is a pedigree submitted. So let's scroll to the top. We can click on pedigrees at the top on the menu here on the right. And I'm going to scroll down through the pedigrees. And I happen to know that there's Ralph Elwood, born 1607, married to Eleanor Lynn. I have married to... Ellen Lynn. Um, 
this pedigree was submitted by the person who submitted the DNA. And by looking at the, the folks in the pedigree, I can tell this is part of my family tree. So I've got a hit here. I am, uh, but um, I also noticed as I was scrolling through here that there's a John Woodbury, also part of the Wood Group there. And looking at this pedigree, I know that this one is also part of my family tree. So I got a bonus, bonus ancestor here. So I'm going to back up. So now as we look through the records, there's my John Woodbury. And a little bit further down, like I said, well, as we saw before, there's my Ralph Ellingwood. So what we're looking at right now, again, are the Y results. Typically, the Y results are sorted by first haplogroup. Now, as we look at the individual records, for example, Ralph, each row of numbers is the haplotype, a series of markers unique to the individual or the individual's family. Uh, so what I'll do now, I've got the marker numbers, and I've got the, the actual values of those markers. What I'll do is I'll put those into the my legacy uh, family tree program. So within family legacy family tree, it has the ability to open up the record, and you can see the DNA strand over here, and I can actually start putting in the marker values for, and you can see I've already put in four of those, and I can fill out all of the marker values from the record. And now I've got a complete listing of Ralph Ellingwood's DNA, Y DNA, in my family tree program. Now, if your family tree program doesn't give you the ability to store the Y DNA markers, it's easy enough to take this record, highlight it, cut it, paste it into a spreadsheet, Word doc, etc. Now I'm going to show you a, a second example using another tool. Let me jump over, back over to my legacy family tree. I'm going to pull up another ancestor. John Dodge. And here's John. Born 1574, died around 1635. This time I'm going to use ysearch.org. Now, ysearch.org is owned and operated by Family Tree DNA, but it gives folks the ability not only to input their family tree DNA, but from a variety of other uh, database sources. So this, this has got a, a great collection of DNA. Uh, in fact, if we take a look at some of the, the statistics, it's got 106,000 records, 76,000 surnames. Now, there's a number of ways to search through this data. You can search by last name, or if you happen to know the haplo type, you can actually plug it in. In this case, we're going to actually search by last name. I'm going to put in the last name Dodge. And we get 60 hits. Now, that's 60 hits where Dodge appears anywhere in the family tree. So what we're going to have to do is look at the results and actually scan down through the last name of the ancestor. And as we scan down through, my first Dodge hit is right here. It says America uh, as the dis most distant location they have. I'm going to take a look at the pedigree. And it goes back to George Dodge, New York, 1822. It doesn't go back quite far enough for what I need. So I'm going to scan down for the next Dodge. The next Dodge this one goes back a little bit further, back to Middle Chinook. Take a look at that pedigree. 
Samuel 1809, back a little bit further. John 1631, back a little bit further. And John 1580, 1635. Married Marjorie. That's my guy. Okay. So, immediately I'm looking at it in a pedigree point of view. If I now go back to the results and I hit the user ID, G2NU3, there's the haplotype. There's all the markers in the haplotype. Not only that, but I get a contact person who is a, if all of this is correct, that Neil Dodge is a cousin. Uh, and I can contact him and get more details. And again, I can take this haplotype information and I can now plug it back into Legacy Family Tree and hang on to it as a permanent part of my record. Now, this was just a quick demonstration of two sources, Family Tree DNA, ysearch.org. There are other database sources out there, though these that I've shown you are the two easiest to navigate. Using these sources, I've been able to identify the haplogroup haplotype information for a few dozen ancestors. Okay, now you've collected your haplogroups and your haplotypes, now what? Now that you've got them, you can validate various lines of descent. So if you are doing research on a name like Dodge and you've got multiple lines of Dodge descent and you can collect their haplotype for each line and compare, you can validate whether or not it is a true uh, Dodge connection, whether they all relate back to the same ancestor or whether they are completely separate Dodge families. What I've seen and what I what I can do is using another one of my surnames, I've got a DNA match, it's a distant DNA match, and that DNA match goes back to England further than my own line of research. So now I can take their research where they've gone back further and I can work forward from their work back to mine to try to make that connection where I might have a, a brick wall. Every time you find a new haplogroup and all the information, the historic and ancient migration information that comes with every haplogroup, that just adds to what you know about your family tree. My favorite piece is being able to take the haplotype and actually being able to track it across time. And by mapping it across time, I can actually see migration patterns. What I've shown you today is not a foolproof method and doesn't take into account that for the records submitted that there couldn't have been errors in research or that there couldn't have been non-paternal events. But what I have shown you does add to your toolkit. Like I said, I've used this method to get a couple of dozen ancestors so far, but obviously I've still got a long way to go. To be absolutely certain, you are going to need to track down living cousins and get Y-DNA tests and then compare those tests. Good genealogy is a verified paper trail, but great genealogy is supported by DNA to rule out adoptions and infidelity and other non-paternal events. I'm Mike Malio asking, where did you come from? Thanks. <laughs>